Tom Mullinay for Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. Hi, my name is Jonathan Howard. I'm an anarchist from Richmond, Virginia as well. And we're here to bring to you the news from underground, from the resistance. And particularly, we're going to talk a lot about urban development that has to concern itself with stadiums, sports stadiums to be specific. Um, yes, we want to combat the the ideal that uh, they will, if you build it, they will come. Uh, some of the themes and questions specifically we'll cover tonight is, uh, uh, do, should we support the idea of um, subsidizing entertainment or any you know business venture uh, in the city and also are sports venues the ideal economic generators that they're often proposed to be uh, so these are some of the main questions we want to answer tonight and our first article we're going to take a look at uh, is titled the Illiches which is the Illich family that owns the Olympia development company and also the Detroit Red, Red Wings um, the Illich is to get all revenues from the new publicly financed Red Wings arena. Now, before we get into this, I kind of, you know, you're probably wondering, new arena in Detroit, right? right? Aren't yeah, they yeah. the biggest bankruptcy ever? But yes, of course, they're pushing for a new arena. Um, and basically, the, the city is so uh, starved and uh, desperate for development that uh, they will give it to whoever, uh, whoever wants it. So, uh, beginning... Um, with a new hockey arena on track to open as early as the 2016-17 season, the agreement between the city of Detroit and the Red Wings will disappear. So the, uh, the former agreement, um, which included about $7 million in revenue that the city received annually, is now um, it's gone. Um, Mike Illich, the owner of Olympia Development, will pick up 42% of the arena's $450 million construction cost. The other 58% will be the, uh, the public share, about $261 million. Uh, it's quite a load, uh, a burden to put on an already burdened Detroit population. Yeah, and then the money comes from you again, stolen from you. Um, and, and these are supposed to be touted as uh, economic uh, development revival stuff in particular areas. So um, that's always the, the buzzwords that they'll use is this uh, economic development. And of course, they want to put it in places that already have economic development, you know, like businesses that are already there. Mm. Um, so we're going to look, go to a lot of further evidence that points um, that that's not the case. Um, it's further scrutinizing the claim that these things actually create a positive boom, you know, for example, for local economies. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, we're not, we're not, uh, you know, we are a nonpartisan uh, group here yeah. at the uh, Liberty RDVA. We we support, you know, um, baseball in Richmond. We support it, sports, entertainment anywhere as long as there's demand for it and yeah. it's not forced from your pocket to pay for it. Uh, right. Historically, baseball stadiums uh, like the Yankees, the original Yankee Stadium, was was funded through private uh, funding. Uh, so, or m for the most part, most of the stadiums that first came out historically came out privately. <laughs> uh, so people were able to turn their hobbies into a business um, uh, outline and platform, and they sustained themselves for a while, um, for, for quite some time until, of course, uh, government subsidies came in, and you know that helps line up their pockets by taking it from yours. Um, so you'll find a lot of examples for this that has uh, turned to. So not to say like you can't have baseball stadiums without stealing from people's money. You can. That's how they started off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So um, uh, back to the the Detroit Red Wings article. We are looking at a complex financing arrangement that uses school and local property tax revenue collected by Detroit's downtown development authority to pay off state issued bonds. The authority will own the arena and lease it rent free. To the Red Wings for up to 95 years. Uh, in addition, wow. in addition to this rent-free agreement, they also sold 13 parcels of land for a dollar to yeah. to the development company. Um, could you imagine saying, uh, "Hey, build my house. Um, you have to pay for half of it, but you're not going to get any rent from me. Uh, I'm going to enjoy all the fruits of living in my in, in the house that you paid half to build." But uh, yeah, you don't Pretty get much. any benefit from it. Yeah, yeah, you, nothing. Nothing comes back to you. Um, and this goes to support the, the people who are wealthily connected to, to the po political regime. And that's all this, that this goes to. That's where the money goes mm -hmm. to. Um, rent free, that's, that's a really good deal. Um, and of course, this comes at your expense. You know, I have sports. Yeah, sports can be fun. Hobbies can be fun. But don't uh, push it to the, to the lengths of having to steal other people's money and property to, to fund your hobbies. Um, and that's where this has gone. Yeah. Um, 
If I could uh, pull out a little quote here from Noam Chomsky, it's um, state intervention to protect private power, but uh, in this case, it's you know a, a certain private power interests that are protected in this case yeah. um, through intervention of policy. Um, so uh, the Red Wings declined to say whether the ticket prices will be affected. You know, okay, so we're footing the bill for half of construction costs, but you know you can't even tell us that hey, you know. A couple years of you know free tickets or something. Yeah. Come on, like we're, you were in a city that's how much unemployed and that was, that's your stolen property. They help finance that and build that. Yeah, I mean, what's your return on your investment? Uh, and uh, you know, again, um, one of the things that they propose that it will bring you know economic generation. It's going to employ 1,100 people, but to do what? Sell hot dogs? Yeah. So um, yeah. And this goes with uh, if you build it. They might not come, <laughs> the risky economics of sports stadiums. In June 2013, the City Council of Glendale, Arizona, decided to spend $324 million on the Phoenix Coyotes, an ice hockey team that plays in Glendale's Jobby.com arena. The team declared bankruptcy in 2009, and the city has to pay the NHL to manage the team for $25 million a year. In return, according to the Republic, the city receives a measly $2.2 million in annual rent payments, ticket surcharges, sales taxes, and other fees. Even if the Coyotes were to dominate the league like no other in recent memory and return to the Stanley Cup final year after year, the city will still lose $9 million annually. Mm. The basic idea, quote, is that sports stadiums typically aren't a good tool for economic development said Victor Mathenson, an economist at Holy Cross who has studied the economic impact of stadium constructions for decades. Take whatever number the sport promoter says and take it and move the decibel one place to the left, then divide it by 10. And that's a pretty good estimate of the actual economic impact. Not much. Um, and we're going to go over a lot of facts put together by the Cato Institute soon that will uh, support uh, the findings of whatever, but believe a 30 year study long of um, many cities that have pro uh, sport baseball teams in there. Not just baseball, but basketball, hockey, football. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, that's just to so the so the first article we talked about, you know, yes, they are hockey stadiums, but we're we're, we're basically kind of starting out in general, you know, sports venues, and uh, you know, kind of combating this idea that they are the economic generators that they're often often proposed to be, um, and this, you know, so that was, and also how, uh, you know, a city like Detroit, who's bankrupt, um, can still be profitable to to uh, the ruling classes to, yeah. um, you know someone else's failure you know i can still clean up you know rent free 95 years uh, the city foots half the bill for construction costs um, and the owner of the red wings team is also happens to you know coincidentally be the owner of the development company yeah who also <laughs> imagine that from the construction imagine that costs. um so and then you know with the uh the second article that cal covered if you build it they might uh they might not come you know Okay, imagine we build a, city, a stadium for baseball here in Richmond. Who's to say that the squirrels, you know, are going to stay? You know, yeah. the squirrels president um, has already stated publicly that it doesn't matter. The location doesn't matter. And they just want a new stadium. Yeah. I mean, so um, it doesn't guarantee you, you know, you can keep the team to fill it. You know? Teams leave all the time. They always make threats on leaving, you know, unless you uh, renegotiate the lease policy, subsidize us even further, or sometimes say, well, unless you build us a new stadium, we'll just move across the river. We'll move right next door. Um, a lot of football teams have done that, yeah. um, especially in, uh, you could look at different areas where they gals, um, like the prices, for example, to, to the cost to build up these stadiums um, always are hidden from you. You know, the initial cost will say, it's like any government program. So it's going to cost this much. And of course, when construction is already underway, they'll find out actually it's going to cost us a little bit more, a couple of million grand. Um, and so that's how it continues to escalate to a higher cost than what was uh, previously, I guess, analyzed to project. Uh, you can look at, um, I guess, Camden Yards was supposed to cost $60 million and it ended up costing $100 million. You can look here in, locally in Richmond, you look at the Reskin camp, camp that was, uh, I believe, a $6, 7000000 million projection and then ended up costing about double that amount uh, near the end. And so they, you can't really project this sort of stuff because, and that's so that kind of leaves room for a lot of corruption, right? 
because uh, obviously this would be uh, something that should, the government should have no involvement in the first place. Let the people who enjoy this uh, sports to, to pay, finance that themselves. Um, but of course, when you involve government, now there's uh, the a lot of added fees to it. A lot of uh, stuff goes missing. A lot of, um, I don't know, the, uh, anonymous, well, I guess, you know, from six to $100 million, a $40 million increase is a lot of money. You know, where, where did that come from? There's a lot of people, of course, who want to line their own pockets out of yours, and that's where that money goes to. Um, people are privy to the to those private information. People are in the in the know in the, I guess the connections politically, um, especially for construction companies that he just mentioned. Mm. Yeah, and uh, in the proposed um, uh, stadium plan in Richmond, you know, it's it's said it's going to bring about ten million dollars annually in revenue. Yeah. So if you take the expert's opinion, you move the decimal place one point to the left, and then divide by ten. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's quite a significant difference, um, so, of uh, the actual economic impact. Um, so, uh, basically, it's just big, you know, city officials taking big risks with other people's money in the hopes that uh, it's, you know, it's something good's going to happen. And, you know, if something, if it goes bust, if the whole plan goes bust, then they don't, they're not there to suffer the consequences the next right. term, right? Um, it's a 30 year. Yeah, they're plan. gone. They're gone. They just wanted to have their name attached to. Hey, I did something. I, I was able to steal all your property to, to create this uh, this baseball stadium. You know, so that'll that, that'll be in his legacy that he he did something. He was a very good thief, good extortionist, good liar. Mm -hmm. I was able to bring these uh, this bread and circuses into your town to distract you. Um, mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah, and uh, I kind of I started out um, with the, the type of research I wanted to do for this piece. We wanted to kind of look at the breakdown of, of the economic impacts of stadiums all across the country. And one city that I looked at in particular, uh, a city that went bankrupt in, in California, Stockton, um, and I wrote a, a little opinion piece to it and uh, basically I just, you know, I proposed that, you know, there just has to be sufficient demand for a sports venue to be built. And you can't just take money, the taxpayers' money, and build something and just kind of hope that it will be successful. I mean, could you imagine doing that in your own lives, you know, day to day. Um, yeah, can you imagine them subsidizing a business you hate? <laughs> I mean, that's all this is. I mean, um, sports is a business. Can you imagine them subsidizing uh, more 7-Eleven stores, subsidizing uh, Kmart, Target, Walmart, uh, another Apple store? You know, you see, you would say, that's unfair. Why don't they subsidize me? <laughs> what, what makes uh, them different than I, yeah. right? Why don't they subsidize my own business? Um, but of course, you have to be politically connected and that's, sorry, that's not you. And that yeah. part of the uh, sociopathic circle that preys on everyone's productivity. Yeah, and and in order to, to even legitimize the subsidization of of these kind of costs, I mean there has to there should at least be a significant majority support for right. the, the plan, and that, that's just not there. I mean there's just there's just too many reasons to not support the baseball stadium in Richmond as there are just the only really one reason that most people cling to is economic development and you know, uh, revitalization, but uh, it's proven that there's many other ways to revitalize uh, cities um, as opposed to yeah. sports venues. And so I'm going to go down a couple of the facts uh, from the Cato Institute. It's entitled Caught Stealing, Debunking the Economic Case for D.C. Baseball. If uh, anyone's from uh, the Washington, D.C. region, I remember when this was going on, and uh, it produced a shitty baseball team that like hardly won any games and just, like it went off to a horrible start in the first couple of years. I don't know how it's doing now. I don't really follow them. Uh, but I do remember the, uh, the economic uh, development and how it kicked out like one of my favorite nightclubs. It was called uh, Nation. It had a great Thursday night, Alchemy at Nations. And uh, yeah, uh, so you, there's a lot of uh, hidden costs to this and it displaces a lot of businesses. It displaces populations of people, marginalizes them, of course. And so the Cato Institute put out an uh, interesting report. And so, for example, the, uh, in the presence of pro, uh, pro sports teams in 37 metropolitan areas had no measurable positive impact on the overall growth of real per capita income in those areas. The presence of pro sport teams had a statistical negative impact, actually, on the real of real per capita income in metropolitan areas. The presence of pro, I might as well say, teams, uh, sports stadiums, had a statistically significant negative impact on the retail and service sectors of the local economy. The average effect on employment in the service sector of a city's economy was a net loss of 1,924 jobs lost. Mm. 
as a result of the presence of a professional sports team. The presence of a pro sports team tended to raise wages in hotels and other uh, lodging escorts by about $10 per year, but it tended to reduce wages per worker and eating and drinking establishments by about $162 per year. As it turns out, workers most closely connected with the sports environments were not professional athletes that were not uh, athletes themselves saw little improvement in their earnings as a result of the local professional sports environment. On average, professional baseball lowered the earnings of workers in eating and drinking establishments by $144 per year. Baseball also lowered per employee annual earnings of workers in hotel and lodging sectors by about $38 a year. And then most striking, of course, is baseball lowered the annual earnings of work, workers in amusements and recreation centers by $503 per year. Mm. Yeah, focusing on baseball even alone as a sport, you know, we started out with some hockey uh, articles. I mean, we really kind of looking at sports venues as generators, but this here is, you know, data specifically looking at baseball and uh, as applied to, to cities and uh, just catastrophic results. Um, nothing really positive. About yeah. Uh, so you'll find they'll, they'll always put their studies, they'll hire the people, you know, the stadium stu uh, scientists or economists will come out and, you know, put out their studies. Also, the cities will also have their own studies. But of course, these are people that are hiring. They're not impartial. They're there to push an agenda. And that agenda is, is sports. And of course, they will try to put in multiple, um, I guess, multiple effects in there to make a show like this is going to show a positive improvement. This is going to grow, show a gross positive gain, a good net gain, for example. But evidence has shown that's the contrary. And a lot of the, what ends up happening, for example, uh, like for example here in uh, Richmond they're trying to create a stadium in uh, Shaka Bottom yet again next to one of my uh, favorite nightclubs Fallout and so what ends up happening they'll think well this is going to drive up economic demand and what ends up happening the people who actually go to this baseball stadium just don't use this, those dollars towards uh, maybe spending that time in carry time carry town how they would right mm. going to the restaurants there going um, or uh, going to the theater, having uh, fun in the already established areas that exist here in Richmond. So the money um, doesn't really, like, there's no additional plus money that, that comes in. People just stop spending in other particular areas and spend them here instead. So that's not as if uh, there's been an improvement. It just moves it around in the same city. Um, and for the most part, people who come to the stadiums are people who come, are closer to Richmond, so they're not going to be driving, you know, geographically far away to come visit. For the most people that we're going to the stadiums are the people that live here already. Um, so the the additional, the the, in, the increase doesn't really affect anything. Like buying food at a at a stadium could have gone to supporting your local restaurant, for example, or uh, going to Kroger, or you know, going to a cafe. Uh, it just removes that, whereas they they spend it over there instead now. Mm. So it's, and in effect, actually drives down uh, non-sport uh, businesses, uh, the, their income. And yeah. so, I mean, this is kind of what happened when the Redskins were, came here in Richmond. They built a, a camp there for them. And they, they taught it that to be like this great economic improvement of development around that area. And, uh, but when you talk to a lot of the um, local businesses, it's like, yeah, we didn't really notice any difference. Yeah, um, I went to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. I went to Kroger. I went to Kroger, I went to McDonald's. Uh, and I need to go to the sports bar. Yeah. There's, there's hardly any, they're just like, they will say there's no, there's no difference. Um, and of course the only difference is, is uh, tricking you into believing that, you know, that the government knows how to find solutions to, to revive particular areas. Mm. Um, so of course this, this Cato report says, in stark contrast to the benefits claimed by most economic impact studies commissioned by teams or stadium activists, the advocates, the academic research overwhelmingly concludes that professional sports teams has no measurable positive impact on economic growth as measured by the level of real income in cities over a 35 year period. It may actually be a drain on local economies rather than an engine of economic growth. I mean, you have your exceptions and a lot of people tout uh, Denver, Colorado as being one of the successful uh, examples of, you know, uh, of how to implement sports venues into the, the city fabric. But I, I mentioned Stockton, California earlier and I wanted to kind of, you know, talk about their numbers and how um, they went bankrupt. Uh, they're a city about the size of Richmond, uh, 292,000 um, people. Uh, their overall debt was about 700 million and about 20% of that, 145 million, was 
for a similarly funded kind of revitalization sports venue, it, it, it's uh, a kind of plan um, that really just kind of drove the knife through the heart of you know economic. I mean, really, the problem in Stockton was violence pushing out you know crime was pushing out business from the city center and also you know urban um, sub suburban flight and whatnot. So same kind of problems mm -hmm. we have here in Richmond. Um, and so, I mean, the, the plan was launched in the early 2000s and included $22 million for a 5,000 seat baseball stadium, $68 million for a 12,000 seat sports and concert arena, a uh, parking garage, a marina, a new city hall. Uh, now the city hall stands empty because <laughs> the government can't afford to move anyone in. Right. Um, so, this is just kind of some of the, and, and you know, some other, you know, you know, wise politician will come in with a, no, a new plan that's supposed to fix the city and it's just gonna, you know, benefit his buddies and whoever. Yeah, well, what happened to uh, the previous plan? <laughs> Why didn't yeah. that work? Or the yeah. plans before that one? It's, yeah, am amnesia at, at its best. So. Yeah. So say no to uh, bread and circuses. Um, <laughs> I mean, don't, don't support hobbies that's stolen from out of your own pocket. Um, you know, and that's, that's, that's the only way, for the most part nowadays, how uh, pro sport stadiums are funded. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, even though they have the funding to do it their, themselves. Uh, but still, it's a lot easier. You know, they get a lot richer quicker just by stealing from you instead. Mm -hmm. So forget the civic uh, national pride that's so you know, Have some pride on yourself, you know, that this is your money, that you're a competent um, adult. You know how to best to allocate your own resources. You know, don't, don't give it off to politicians who don't care much about you, but having their name or a placard associated with that. And once they're out of the office, you know, that's all they'll tell for the rest of their lives. They don't really care about you. If they did, they, they'd respect your property. They wouldn't steal it from you. And on the last note, um, is baseball really even a uh, characteristic of Richmond, of the city population? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people, they just go to the river and they chill or they'll, you know, like uh, we have, you know, the art walk and stuff. You know, we yeah. just want to kind of go downtown, you know, f you know, feel it out, maybe go to a bar, visit with some friends. Um, the impact of a stadium and just kind of throwing that in the middle of it, you know, aesthetically, the plan looks great. And they, you know, they revitalized the 17th Street Farmer's Market. It goes right into a nice open vista of the, the stadium. I mean, any urban planner that would look at this just kind of firsthand would be like, wow, this looks really cool. Yeah. Um, but the, the impacts it's going to have, I mean, it's, a, it's in a floodplain, you know, and, and there's a lot of great uh, other components of the plan that's going to shore up the flood defenses of Shaco Bottom. But why do we need a stadium to do that? Right. right? People from Hurricane Gaston in 2004 devastated by floods. Um, but we need a stadium in order to, to fix that's, those That's the trick. Why? Don't, fall, don't fall for the trick. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I just wanted to kind of put that out there as far as the character of Richmond and is it really even necessary? And is there a really a, a significant um, amount of people who really want to go see baseball? Right. And yeah, the people want to see baseball get together, start a Kickstarter campaign, buy some land together, you know, create a viable business solution. Don't steal the property of others around you that have no interest um, to, to do that. And a lot of these stadiums do by stealing their property to begin with, not just their money, but also their land. Um, eminent domain is a big thing that a lot of um, mayors all across the, this country uh, that, that uses that power to, to steal their land to, to create these bread and circus stadiums. Yeah. Um, they're not to, we're not here saying anything negative about sports. Enjoy your sports. I mean, dodgeball is a fun sport, um, but that I, I would never steal from you to fund my dodgeball stadium. You know, no matter how much you, you want to give me your money, but if you do, then that's great and that's voluntary. But I'm not going to come around and take it from you without your, your consent. Great. So yeah, I hope this has been enlightening from news from the underground, um, and we you know hope that uh, you as you know. Confident, responsible adults can make the, the right decisions to lead your lives. So take care, care guys. See you guys at the victory party. Cal Maloney signing off. John Howard signing off.